to our man excited today that you are able to join us here on cctv in cambridge boston massachusetts and i'd like to welcome our facebook audience thank you very much for joining us today on our monday's broadcast this program is so real this program i love it because i come to you live in other words what god has put on my heart what god has put on my heart i speak to you i speak to you personally i'm very very excited about this one of the main main reasons as christians Today, which the church is ignoring, is not receiving the inner power of the Holy Spirit. And we need to have the power of the Holy Spirit. So, I'm going to be talking on this um, why you should be troubled when you have the power of the Holy Spirit. Our topic today, why are you troubled? In your heart, ask that question. Why are you troubled in your heart? And I believe this is really very, very um, important because we should never, never be troubled we need to understand this. We need to get this. Because once we get this, this is going to turn our lives around. So, I'm telling you right now. I want to encourage you. Invite somebody. Tell somebody to log on and hear what I'm about to share. Because today is a very, very important topic, what I'm about to share. And uh, again, I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you. Why should you be troubled in your heart, in your mind? These are the most important areas most of us we get troubled in our minds. We get troubled in our hearts. And we should not as Christians be troubled. This is really, really deep because when you are troubled, you cannot be able to go to another level in your life. That's important. So when you listen and you pay attention to what I'm about to say today, you don't have to be troubled anymore. It is not God's will for you to be troubled, to be bothered, to be concerned. Whatever fancy word you might want to use, I'm bothered. I'm troubled. You know, we need to know it is not God's will for you to be troubled and uh, where am I getting this? I'm getting this in the Gospel of John, chapter 14 and verse 1. Chapter 14 of the Gospel of John and verse 1. Why should you be troubled? If you have cast all your cares upon the Lord, why should you be troubled? Because this is very vital. Because most of us, of course, you say, well, I'm troubled because I am just a human being. No, no, you are not just a human being. When you became a Christian, when you got born again, the Spirit of the Almighty God came into your heart. And when the Spirit of God came into your heart, with your spirit, you were reunited, powerful. You became one with the Spirit of God. So you are not 
you are not just a human being. You are a spirit being. I pray you study on this statement I'm making. It is radical, yet profound, yet it will be able to take you to another level in your life. Why? Because it's that important when you are not troubled. In other words, you are focusing on the word of God. And when you focus on the word of God, you have your mind on the Lord. Your mind is set on the Lord. You will be able to focus on the divine power, on the spiritual power. You will not be diverted. Actually, the Bible says in Isaiah 26 and verse 3, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. What a promise. What a guarantee. In other words, you can, you can guarantee in your life perfect peace. God has guaranteed that to us. All we need is to agree with God. That I agree with you, God. I'm going to be in perfect peace. All you need is to have your mind focused. All you have to do is to put your eyes and look up to God. He is the source of everything. But the moment you don't focus, that's a good word, you don't focus, you don't pay attention to the word of God, you will be distracted, you will be denominated or dominated with the wrong thoughts from the enemy, from the adversary, because you are not focusing on the Lord. Man, what I'm sharing with you tonight or this afternoon, it's really a very, very important subject. Because one of the problems, even we see this happening with the men, with the men of God, including myself, when we don't focus on the things of God, and we focus on the negative, you focus on the trouble you are about to encounter, or find yourself in. You think about it. Guess what? That is what is going to come your way. So this is a very, very vital that you begin to focus on the things of God because that is where you are going to go. But if you focus on the negative report, it could be from the doctor. And by the way, I'm not denying the facts. No. But the point I'm bringing out here is you to focus on what God has promised in his word. God has promised in his word. Deuteronomy 28 and verse 2. That the blessings of God are going to come over you. The blessings of God, they are going to overtake you. Powerful scripture. Powerful scripture. The problem, <coughs> excuse me, the problem with the children of Israel, they did not focus on the promises of God. Guess what? They were troubled. Guess what? Many died in the wilderness. Many never made it to the promised land. God had promised them the, a land flowing the milk and the honey. That was a promise of God. But they had a problem. They were troubled. Well, we left Egypt. We used to have food. We were slaves, but we used to have food. Now we are in the desert. There is no food. We even don't know where we are going. That is what I'm talking about. When God says, I'm leading you to the promised land, just believe it. Just trust in him. Just 
actually thank him and say, God, I thank you because you are leading me to the promised land where there are houses which I did not build, where there are wells which I didn't dig, where there are grapes, good ones, I did not plant. Think about that. This is the God I'm talking about. And he cannot lie. You can take him at his word. But if you get in your heart troubled, you got a, I got a problem with that. Have you ever heard somebody say that? I got a problem with that. And many times, they are saying they have a problem with that. In spite God said it. In spite God promised it, then you say, I got a problem with what God promised. What are you talking about? This is the God, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, who has made us kings, who had made us priests. Think about this. This is really, really powerful. We need to know what God has promised us. And if God has promised it, it will come to pass. Let me tell you, another person in the Bible, he was troubled. Okay? When God promised Abraham that he was going to be a father of many nations, things didn't look like that. In his sight, you looking at the age you don't get a baby when you are about 90 years old, 100 years old, scientifically, biologically. That is out of the question. But not with God. God has no limitations. God created. God is awesome. God is powerful. God said, let there be light. Guess what? There was light out of nowhere. We need to believe in this God who created you. You have like a billion neutrons in your, in your brain. Who else could do that but God? And that's why I'm telling you here. Because if you don't consider you will be diverted. Consider what God has promised it. In other words, meditate on what God has promised you. Yes, you are going through a problem. Yes, I have gone through problems. And I will continue to go through problems. But one thing I know, with a sh without a shadow of doubt, God is going to be with me. The only way I can lose is when God is not with me. But listen to what the Bible says. God will never, ever leave me forever. Oh, that's good. What a promise, man. God will never leave you. And if God will never leave you, no matter what you encounter, no matter what you go through, he's going to be with you. And the God is going to make sure, God is going to make sure you go through it. Because he has promised it. you will go through the valley. You will go through the challenges. You will go through the trials. That's another word. We get traveled, troubled about trials, about some testings in our lives. When you really don't see the end, you don't see the, the answer, you come and even lose hope. Hope, man, that is the greatest thing God has given us to have our hope in his word. That God is going to give us the victory. We are going to be overcomers. Man, that's powerful. We need to trust God and take him at his word. And when we trust God and take him his word, we will stop making 
statements that are not spiritual, statements that are not divine, statements are not truthful. I'm just a human being. No, 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 no. You are not just blood. You are not just a body. You are a spirit being created from the image of God. I'm, I, I'm just sharing this with you. I challenge myself every day. In a matter of fact, I have made a policy. I have made it a principle that every day I got to find time, a minimum of one hour, two hours, where I can meditate on the goodness of God, where I can meditate how good God is, not how good I am. We mix these two. Because when you think about yourself, you become a self-centered. And first of all, you are power powerless without the power of God. But when you meditate and say the good God who created you is within you, is upon you. Wow. He's upon you. Think about that thought, man. What does it mean? God is upon you. His power is upon you. The anointing of God is upon you. Think about that. That is really very, very powerful. And that's why I am bringing this up here. Now, here's another good scripture. It's found in 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4. He talks about greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What a scripture, man. Jesus is greater than any little God out there. Is greater than the devil himself. Is greater than any evil force. You got to believe this, ladies and gentlemen, that he is in you. And because he's in you, that puts you in what position? You become greater. His other name, besides Jesus, another name, you can say he's greater. Man, you walk your head up because he's greater. I'm going through this. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over it. Over it. Yeah, this is huge. This is a big circumstance. This is a big trial. Get to yourself and begin to speak the word. Confess the word. I'm going to go over this. I like the attitude of Paul. In Corinthians, he said, the light afflictions. Yeah. You put him in jail. He said, this is a light affliction. <laughs> he doesn't know when he's going to come out. But as far as he's concerned, he said, this is a light affliction. Because he knows the almighty God is going to see him through. It is not God's intention for you to be suffering, to be in a pain. Because if that is a case, then God would be contradicting himself. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. Whoa, what a scripture. John chapter 10, verse 10. If you can get that scripture, you need to get the scriptures. You need to get the word of God. You want to encounter the enemy. You want to encounter the devil. You better know the word. Speak the word. Quote the word, God says, it is written, Jesus wants me to have life abundantly, not even mediocre, not even average. Yeah, most of us, we, have, we settle for average. We, stead, we, we settle for mediocrity. No, that is not God's will. You could say, man, I got this. I can take care of my family. I can take care of my, my, myself. I can pay my bills. It's cool. No, 
God wants you to have life abundantly. What does that mean? In other words, you have a surplus. You have a leftover. You can bless other people because, because God has blessed you. I know this is an area where most of us Christians, we are struggling. We are struggling. Let me give you a good example. There was a man by the name Abraham. Abraham, his background was shady. In other words, this was no good, really. It was involved of worshipping idols. The family was not that good. The village he was in it was not that good. But God called him out of Ura. You are. He called him out of that community. And God told Abraham, I have blessed you. Listen to this. A man who didn't have basically anything. He said, I blessed you with gold. I blessed you with silver. I blessed you with cattle. I blessed you with land. I know somebody sent me a text. He said, well, this is, not, this is not for everybody. Well, again, again, it is a choice. If you say it is not for everybody, you believe it in your heart. This, 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 this abundant life God is talking about, Jesus is talking about in John chapter 10, verse 10, that is not for me. No, no, no. It's not for me. Eh? You can't get it. You can't get it. You're going to suffer poverty, which is not the will of God. But since you believe it, God can't do anything anything about it but stop saying see what god has done for me no that has not been done by god to you it you have done it yourself because your mind is set because you are troubled in your mind you are troubled in your heart what am i gonna do how am i gonna get out of this i'm telling you a lot of people are going through this Yes, I'm originally from Uganda, and as I talk today, we have people really applying to come to the United States or other parts of the world so they can further their success, further their education, further their prosperity. But some of these people, they have come to the conclusion because they applied three times, four times, they were turned down, okay? Okay. And that's going to happen. But don't be troubled. That's what my message is today. Don't be troubled. John 14 and verse 4. Because when you are troubled, you limit God. When you are troubled, you are worried. When you are troubled, you are saying, God, I don't think you can do this. No, there is nothing impossible with God. There is nothing too hard with God. All things are possible. To him that believes. This is a very important message. It's going to turn your life around. God has faith in you. God has put all the blessings upon you. And given them to you. But it is your responsibility to respond. And one of the best ways to respond to the promises of God, you don't say, I'm really troubled. I'm really troubled. Why would you be troubled when you're a Christian? Why would you be troubled when Jesus died on the cross and said, all your sins have been forgiven? Think about that. The blood of Jesus washed your sins are away. You are clean. That's another area we are struggling in. God says you are clean. Why are you clean? Because of Jesus in you. You need to look at yourself. You are clean. And say, Lord, thank you. You died for me. I'm clean. I am clean. I am perfect. Not because of you. Not because of what I'm doing. But it is because of what Jesus what Jesus did on the cross for you. You didn't deserve it. 
I didn't deserve it. But that's what the grace of God is all about. He blessed us. Not because we deserve this. Man, there are things God has blessed me in my life. Not because I deserve them. The other day I had a close, close friend of mine who really, I would say, knows me. He came to me, John, why? And he asked me this question. Why are you blessed? <laughs> he looked at me. I was a blessed man. You know, he calls me. I am happy. I am smiling. You know, and uh, he said, John, you are blessed. And I look behind, realistically, I wasn't able to do anything. It is because of God's grace upon my life. And this is an area we need to believe. We need to thank God. God has blessed you. Well, look at me. I understand what you are going through. But be, continue believing in God. Job went through. A difficult time. Job went through a trying time. It was not easy. For nine months, he lost a bunch of things. He lost property. But Job continued believing God. In Job 42, God doubled, doubled twice as much what he had before. Things got better Please get this message. Instead of you being troubled, I'm troubled. How am I going to get my visa? How am I going to get my papers? Stop it. Begin to thank God. They are coming. When you thank God, you are praising him. That means you thank God by faith. You are taking him at his word. You are trusting in him. He will be able to see you through. And that's why it is so important. He said, God, thank you. Don't get troubled. Troubled will not help your situation. Again, I'm giving you the scripture. John 14 and verse 1. He said, don't be troubled. I can sh show you many other scripture references along those lines. All you need, instead of you being troubled, look to God. Listen to this scripture. I've said it before and I'm going to say it one more time. It's a real good scripture. Isaiah 26, anniversary. He says, Thou will keep him in a perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. Perfect peace. A lot of people want to have peace. They are going into wrong ways. There is a lot of corruption in the world out there. People do real crazy things. They will kill even another human being or other people. I mean, the wars we have had. War number one. Second World War Two. It was about greed. It was about power. It was about owning money. It was, no, no, no. It's not going to happen that way. You don't get peace by being corrupt or by going the wrong way. You need to go the right way. I thank our sister Sibo just posted the scripture, Isaiah 26, verse 3. And I would like Sister Sibo, she's my dear sister, my supporter. Sibo, if you could also post John 14. John 14 and verse 1. Very good because it is, it's, it's the theme today. John 14 and verse 1. Stop being troubled. Stop being worried. I got this one, you get troubled. There's an accident, you get troubled. You get a bill, you get troubled. Where is your faith? God is saying, don't do it. Trust in him. Put all your cares upon him. Because when you are troubled, please get this. When you are troubled, you are opening the door of the devil in your life. That's what you are doing. Now the devil is going to come to you. Yeah. You got some problem, man. Yeah. You are troubled. Yeah. You are worried. And some of us will shake our heads. Yes. Yes. And before you know, you put your head down. 
Because you have no confidence. You look like a defeated foe. Put your head up and talk back to the devil. I am a child of God. I am blessed. Yes, I'm not denying what I'm going through. Here's another good scripture. John 16. John 16 and verse 33. In the world, in this world, whether you are in Africa, whether you are in the United States, you will have tribulation. You will have challenges. You will have trials. That's good. But, I like that word, but, when Jesus says but, in other words, forget about it, anything else. But I have overcome. Please get this message. He has overcome. The devil has no power. The only power the devil has is when he borrows our power. We give the power to the devil willingly. Because the devil has no power. He has no authority. You give it to him. He will deceive you. He will tell lies on you. And some of us, we give it to him. It's like a wrong man coming into your life and your woman and tells lies. I'm a good guy. I got a lot of money. I am very educated. I have so many cars. I have houses. It's lying to you. And a lot of sisters in Christ, they fall for that. Really? Yeah. Well, let me go with this guy. You're going with the wrong guy. He lied to you. That's why you need to be smart, woman. That you need a smart girl. Ask questions. Yeah, ask questions. He came driving a nice car to pick you, maybe to go out for the date or to go out for a dinner. But then ask the question, is this your car? Well, this is my daddy's car. Well, this is my mama's car. Get a message now. He doesn't have a car. He borrowed the car. Maybe he rented the car. He just wanted to impress you. And most of us, we fall into those categories. He keeps lying one thing after another. And then eventually he's going to win you. Eventually, if you're not smart enough, he'll go to bed with you. Eventually, he will marry you. Eventually, you're going to find out what a liar he married you to. All I'm saying, all I'm saying, please, lean to the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, everything has been set for us. One time, before Jesus went to heaven, he told his disciples, in Luke 24 and verse 48, don't go anywhere. Wait for the promise. Wait for the comforter. Wait for the Holy Spirit. Man, that's powerful. It is expedient. It's for your own good. You wait for the Holy Spirit. Man. It's for your own good. You need the Holy Spirit to guide you, to lead you, to direct you. Why did Jesus tell his disciples to wait for the Holy Spirit? So that they can receive the power. Here's a big, big mistake we make, most of us Christians. We do things in our own power. Your own power is so limited. Without the power of God working in you, Ephesians 3.20, you cannot go very far. You need to allow the power of the Holy Spirit to work in you. That's good. You need his power, not your own power. Don't dwell on your own intelligence. Dwell on the power of the Holy Spirit. I promise you, you will have abundant life. No more making mistakes. Because now you are depending on the leading of the Holy Spirit. 100%. And once you depend on the leading of the Holy Spirit, 
you will get there where he wants you to be. He will direct you. You will never, never be lost. The leading of the Holy Spirit is way, way better, much, much better than the GPS. Yeah. GPS is not 100%. It has misled me a couple of times. <laughs> I was going from one state and it was taking me to another state. And I reached there. They said, no, not here. It's back where you're coming from. You know, I'm telling you the truth. But when you depend on the leading of the Holy Spirit, you have guarantees. You can't make a mistake. You will be where God wants you to be. Because some of us, man, it is taking us a long, long time. Something should have taken you a week. It ends up taking you six months, if not a year. Because you are not listening to what the Spirit of God is saying. You will not be troubled. Seriously. You will not be troubled. So this is a very, very important message. That you don't get troubled. Why would you be troubled? God cares about you. God knows every detail about you. Every little disease, headache, whatever the situation might be, God is aware of it. So you need to trust on him. Because if you keep being troubled, you will be distracted. Your mind will be going in a wrong way. You start creating things. You know what? Yeah. I think I might go to jail. Who told you you're going to go to jail? Now you are believing you're going to jail. If I don't pay the money, what do you think? I'm going to go to jail. Why are you going that the money is not going to come at the right time? God is never, never late. He will make sure money, if you need money, he knows your needs. Yeah. Stop being, Stop hurrying God. Stop pushing God. God takes his own time. God's time is different from your time and from my time. Okay? What is a thousand years to you? What is a thousand years to me? To God is like one day. <laughs> Think about that. Think about that in your brain. A thousand years. I can't. How do you explain that? Well, that tells you God. You, you can't hurry God. He's not in a hurry. He's got everything planned out. God never worries about the future. He is the future. All I'm saying, get this mindset of God. Get the knowledge of God. Get the wisdom of God. And once you get the knowledge and the understanding, you will be able to balance it out. That's a good word. Balance. In other words, play your part. Don't, don't try to help God, please. Just play your part. Just believe God. Just trust God. Just rest in God. Just thank Him. Just praise Him. And let him do the rest. Yeah. Let him bring the money. Let him bring your spouse. Because some of you, the way you talk, my good Lord, the way you talk, I don't think I'll ever get a good person in my life. I don't see. Look at the way things are going in the world. I don't think so. I don't see anything out there. Why don't you say, God, thank you. I got a good woman coming in my way. I got a good man coming in my way. Why don't you be like Ruth? <laughs> oh, I love that story of Ruth. Ruth had a life coach in her life. 
I'm a life coach. I love to coach people. I love to counsel people. I love to inspire people. Ruth had a good coach. And that coach was her mother-in-law by the name Naomi. Naomi coached Ruth very, very well. Some of you girls today, you don't want to listen to your aunties. You don't want to listen to your elders. You think you got it because you know how to use the internet now. You need to get some wisdom. You need to get some counseling from godly people. It's in the Bible. Yes. Ruth got some good counseling. How to behave. Yeah, that's a good word. How to talk. How to behave herself. How to handle herself. And guess what? It worked. She ended up getting married to the richest fellow in that area. His name was Boaz. And guess what? She ended up in the line of Jesus. Because she was listening. What I'm talking to you is going to change your life. If you listen, if you pay attention, you write these scriptures I'm giving you. I'm giving you the word of God. The word of God is powerful. The word of God will change your life. The word of God will take you to another level. The word of God, if you're a business person or you're about to start one, it will be successful. I know how to be a, biz a successful businessman because I let Jesus, my partner, I work with him, he works with me. I listen how every detail, he, he, he's good at planning. I can't go wrong. And that's what I'm talking about. There are things we need to know. There are things we need to play our part. Don't play God's part. Play your part. How about Esther? I talk a lot about relationship. Esther, getting married to the king. This lady, she was an orphan. Esther, she was raised by her uncle. She was nobody. But she listened to her uncle. And then she eventually listened to the man who was in charge. Very much the right hand of King Casuela. So this fellow told her, this is what the king likes. Yeah. That's really good. You need to do this. You need to do this. You need to bathe. <laughs> you need to wash. You need to smell good. Well, do I really have to use a deodorant? Yes. Yes. I know some of you don't take this thing seriously. That's why you need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is very detailed. He knows much better than you. You need to brush your teeth. Well, I brushed yesterday. Do I have to brush again this morning? Yes. Because if you don't brush, that's when you're going to meet that boy. And... Bad breath is going to come out of your mouth. That's all you will remember. Man, I met this girl. She's beautiful, but oh boy, her breath stinks. <laughs> I know some of these things, we don't talk about them publicly, but they are true. They are real. The Holy Spirit is very detailed, is your best ally, is your best friend. He will give you incredible advice. He will, he will show you things you have no clue. But you need not to be troubled. Because most of us, we are spending much time being troubled. I'm really troubled. Actually, if I meet people, they don't even have to tell me they are troubled. I just look at their face, they are really troubled. Yeah. They are really troubled. I'm being honest with you. You can look on their face, my good Lord. They are troubled. But when you are not troubled, your face will be a glowing. There will be 
the light of Jesus on your face. People will look at your face. They want to hang around you. They want to hear what's going to come out of your heart. You are beautiful inside because you are not troubled. Troubled people. You don't want to hang around them. They are very annoyed people. They are very stressed out people. They are very depressed people. Because they are troubled. There is a reason why Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 1, don't be troubled. Don't be troubled. Yes, we're going to have problems and I'm not denying that. But I want you to cheer. You cannot be troubled at the same time be cheerful. They just don't get along. Because if you try to cheer, it will be fake. And the people are smart enough to see you a troubled man. Nobody should bury you. <laughs> yeah. That's why some people are, that's one of the reasons some people are very single for a long, long time. Because you scare women. Yeah. Yeah. Think about this. I'm just trying to get you to be in good shape. To have a sound mind. That's a good... I, mean, I, I did a speech about sound mind. There are some people, they don't have a sound mind. They don't want to hang around them. They are miserable. They don't have even to say anything, but they don't have a sound mind. Why would you hang around such a people? But I'll tell you, when you are not troubled, you will have a sound mind. You will be happy. You will be laughing. You will be cheering. Okay, we are about to close CCTV here in Cambridge. I want to close with this scripture found in Deuteronomy 8 and verse 18. I want you to know that it is God who will give you the ability to get wealth. That's very good. God will give you the ability. God will give you the wisdom. God will give you the knowledge. Simple idea. How do millionaires become millionaires? Through ideas. Through Positive thoughts. How do people become even billionaires? Again, through ideas. They, 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 they have brain. But they sit and say, you know what? I think of this. I'm going to act on it. I'm going to respond to that idea. Some of you get ideas. You don't want to write it down. You don't have time because you're busy watching TV. You're busy on WhatsApp. You check it 100 times a day. You are very busy with your phone, with your TV, with your internet. How much time do you give to God just to meditate on the goodness of God? Because if you don't do that, you're going to be a troubled man. You watch some of these negative movies, horror movies. Man coming to kill somebody, blood all over the place. You see the movies, they are going to affect you. They are going to influence your life. You go to bed, to sleep, you dream them. Stupid movies. They have not helped you. Invest your time reading the word. Meditating on the word. Invest your time in prayer. Invest your time having a fellowship with God. Invest your time having a relationship with God. Because the moment you do these things, you will be uplifted. You will not be troubled. You will not be worried about tomorrow. 
You'll begin to say, God, I thank you. I have a bright future. I thank you. I'm an overcomer. I am victorious. I am above all my problems. Ladies and gentlemen, watching at C at CCTV, thank you very much for logging in today. And I'm so glad you were able. Next time, Monday, I'll be here from 3 to 4. Visit us, www.cfmfan.org. God bless you. And to finish up with my friends here on Facebook, thank you very much for joining me today because I believe this message has been very powerful. Don't be troubled. Don't worry of anything but trust in God. This video, it will be played to its entirety. Just check it out, forward it to somebody, share it with somebody. Because when you share it, when you're blessed, bless another person. Post it on your Facebook. Let people hear the good news, the gospel. People need to hear the good news. It is what sets people free, the good news. The gospel, too good to be true, it will change your life. It talks about the grace of God. It talks about the mercy of God. It talks about the goodness of God. He is a good God. You need to get that in your mind, in your heart, that my God is good. My God is good. Nigerians say, my God is good oh. Is good oh, amen. He's a good God. Because when you keep saying he's a good God, you're not gonna be troubled. You look at I mean it's like yeah, there are problems, but you will be above because God is good. God is never, never under problems. That's why you see Jesus sleeping in the boat. He had peace. How about the storm? What storm? He's above the storm. Yeah. The disciples were shaken. Don't you care? We're going to perish. That kind of mindset is not going to help you. Nobody's perishing because God is with you. Oh, I love to talk about the new covenant of grace. I got a covenant with God. We are together. One spirit, his spirit and my spirit, we are one. I don't have to be worried about anything. Take no thought about tomorrow. Don't be worried. It's going to be weird because God has not fallen off his throne. He is on the throne. He is looking over you. You going to be all right. You're going to be well. Well, this just happened to me. Don't worry about it. God was not sleeping when it happened. He saw it coming. It happened. There is plan B, which is going to be better than the one you had before. Well, I just broke up with my boyfriend. I broke up with my girlfriend. Don't worry about it. That's not the end of the world. There's going to be a better boyfriend. There's going to be a better girlfriend. There's going to be a better wife. I don't encourage you to break up. But if it happens, look forward. Yeah, look forward. Keep moving. Keep praising God. I want to say I love you. Thank you very much for tuning in to All Is Well with Dr. John LeChems. Please visit my website. www.cfmfan.org And also... If you live in this area or you're visiting, come and visit our Bible study here in Boston, which I lead every Tuesday. And also, we got a church, CFM, Cape Cod Church. I, you, all this information is on our website. You want to visit an area? Come and visit us. Come and worship with us. We love 
visitors. We love new people. We love to pray with you. We love to worship with you. Do you have a question? Do you have a prayer request? Email me. Text me. 206 777 Those of you calling from overseas should be uh, plus one two zero six seven 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 five eight eight five. Give us a call. Text us. We want to see you. You go to another level of success. I love you and thank you very much for tuning in today. Bye-bye.